Uh, okay. I was messing about. Um. Thomasina, please stop leaving your toys lying about the place. What happened the last time you left your dolly under the tree? A fox ate it, madame. Yes, it did. Fetch it now, won't you? Then I'll fix your supper. Yes, madame. Okay, uh, welcome back to uh, the excavation of Hobbs Barrow. Sorry, that really confused me. I, I didn't expect that to work. I used the trowel on the mushrooms and I'm in some sort of flashback. Uh, get my doll. Is that what I'm doing? I've got, I haven't got a to-do list. Um, What's for supper, madame? It'll be nothing but a glass of water and a worm if you don't fetch your dolly right this instant. Oh, that was... Hello, fairies. Oh, interesting. That's why it, it worked, because you said he gave it to the fairies and then mushrooms? I don't know. You are, Josephine. I won't let the foxes eat you. Oh? Who's that you have there, little bird? Josephine. She introduced me to the fairies. Oh, fairies, you say? Yes, Daddy. Do you believe in fairies? Of course. Do you see those mushrooms over there? Yes. That's the gateway to their kingdom. That's where Josephine and I go to talk to the fairies. Now, listen to me, Thomasina. Yes? You're old enough now to hear this. There's no such thing as fairies or talking dolls, my little bird. What do you mean? I'm sorry, my dear child. I do not wish to upset you. I just want to make sure that you understand the difference between fantasy and reality. Josephine is just a doll, and fairies do not exist. But, Daddy... Science is the great antidote to the poison of enthusiasm and superstition. Please always remember that. If you hear anything about fairies or the like again, know that it's hogwash. What is it? Hogwash. Okay. Did Wally bury the doll, I wonder? There it is. Lovely. This must be Jane's ragdoll. Look at it writhing away. Look at it writhing. Okay. There is something somewhat unsettling about its appearance. Yeah, it does look a little weird. Perhaps these wriggling worms are the fair folk young Wally was so fearful of. How strange. There is a hairpin pierced through the arm. Mm. This may come in handy. I'll keep it. Oh, okay. At least I shall not return from Bewley empty-handed. Okay. Oh, let's go give the doll to uh, Jane. Hello, Jane. I present to you Myrtle. Myrtle! I missed you so much! Now, I believe we had a deal. Hide and seek! Oh. <laughs> it's in moments like these I thank myself for not having children. Hey! Jane? Jane, get out of there. Don't make me come in. You're going to you're going to go in there, are you? Curses. The hole is too small for me to fit through. Yeah. <laughs> oh. 
I was always happiest with a trowel in my hand, uncovering hidden worlds within the earth itself, clod by clod. That should do it. <laughs> Jane! Jane? Jane? <laughs> Jane, come out this instant. I can't see a damned thing in here. I need a light source. Curses. The useless thing blew out. Uh, do I have anything else? No. Okay, well, I'm... I don't know what I'm supposed to do now then. Um... Jane is hiding in a what in what appears to be an underground cave system. I need a light source to investigate further. Uh, okay. Let's use the map. <laughs> no, that's where Ah, oh, you idiot. Uh let's go this way. Actually no, it's just easier to do this. Right, let's see if we can I can't try to pick the lock whilst Mr. Long is standing there. Right, okay. Hello. Good day. Can I buy you another drink? I suppose one more ale won't hurt. <laughs> I shall take you up on your offer, Miss Bateman. Let us make our way. Uh this isn't the way to do it though, so It really is great to have someone you Yeah, he's just repeating himself so now. Well, wait. Ta -ra. Miss Bank. Okay, so. Uh, I'm not sure what to do now. But let's go speak to Wally, actually, see if Wally knows how to get Jane out of the, um, out of the cave. What? There's nothing else I wish to do. Oh, okay. Hello? What can you tell me about Lord Panswick? Now to say, except don't be sniffing around his lordship's manor. You'll end up with a round of shot in you. I beg your pardon? You heard me. Just mind your own business around here. I really must find Hobbs Barrow. What did I tell you last time? Not to be found digging around in those things. Goodbye. Ta -ra. I still got the trowel, so I must be able to use something. I can't see how that will. I can't see. <laughs> um. That's a peculiar idea. It is. But I thought it might work, but I guess not. This appears to be a re Hmm. And she didn't like using the trowel, did she? Barrow digger. No, okay. What was this way? Oh, hello. Can I pick mm. the worm wrong? You're coming with me, little fellow. Okay. I'll name you Kenneth. Uh. I've already taken one. I've already taken Okay, what would I use the worm for? It's little Kenneth. The moors stretch into the distance. Mm hmm. Good day to you, Cyril. I'll do, lass. What do you make of Henry Long? <laughs> An idiot who thinks that station's a good idea. Can you imagine? Strangers pouring into Bewley. Turns the stomach, that does. Maybe he has a point. You could travel. Bah! You're an outsider. I'd expect you to have such a bad opinion. But Henry, he's a Bewley lad. We've had the odd Barney or two in the pub over it all. I can imagine. Can I buy you a drink, Cyril? Now? Yes. Come on then, lass. Follow me. Oh, maybe we can get them both to the pub and they'll start 
arguing with each other. So then he turns around and says, Why is a dog like a tree? And I says, I don't know. And he says, Because they both lose their bark once they're dead. <laughs> oh, God. That's... Very droll, Cyril. Yeah. Well, it's been a pleasure, but I must be off. Aye, ah, lass. Tar for the drink. You're not too bad for an outsider. <laughs> right, now I can get Henry here, perhaps. And they can argue between themselves. Hello. Good day. Can I buy you another drink? I suppose one more ale won't hurt. I shall take you up on your offer, Miss Bateman. Let us make our way. To think, if that station hadn't been built, we would never have met. Blessed be the Midland Railway. Idiot! <laughs> that station is the worst decision this village has ever made! Cyril Farnaby, a miserable man with miserable ideas. I will change your mind even if it kills me. There we go. Right, now let's use the lockpick on the double doors. Uh... Kenneth taught me this useful trick. A hairpin is much more than a hair accessory. A few wiggles and this lock should spring right open. I've snapped the hairpin in the process, but I managed to unlock the door. Let's open this envelope. There's a note inside. Miss Bayman, I beg your part I beg you for your forgiveness. A matter of grave urgency has arisen in London and I cannot join you in Bewley. I pack your usual equipment and pray you will find local assistance in my absence. I look forward to seeing you upon your return. Yours faithfully, Kenneth Murdoch. How very frustrating. I wonder what happened. I'd better get this to the alley before Mr. Long comes back. Moving a fully laden crate through the village square was no easy task. Somehow, no one was there to witness it. But I didn't give up, because I never give up, do I, Mother? I am as stubborn as my father, as you liked to remind me. Wait. Where is my money? It's not in here. Kenneth, you absolute liability of a man. It looks like everything else is in here. Picks, specimen trays, shovels. Oh, my chisel, I'll take that. Ah, oh, my lantern. It feels light. There mustn't be any oil inside. I'll leave the rest in the crate. Stanley assured me things would be safe here. No money and no assistant. This is most inconvenient. Still, I've been in worse situations. I've got a tab at the inn for now. I'll worry about money later. I must find that barrow and get on with the excavation. Right, okay. So we've got a lantern, got a chisel. Uh, okay. Oh, I'd rather not go. Okay. <laughs> Where can I get some oil? I wonder. I can't think of anything. Good day, sir. If that ends up being Mr. Shoulder, I'm going to be so annoyed. <laughs> I'll leave Cyril and Henry to their grand debate. The candle has melted. It's not much use anymore. Perhaps Mr. Kemp will replace it this evening. I see. Um. Jam. I've stored my a box. Hmm. Okay. 
Where will I get oil from? Actually, let's talk to the Stanley again. I can't think of anything else to talk about. Oh, okay. Maybe there's something in the church that I can get oil from? No, don't look like it. Nope. Hmm. Let's see if she tells me if I try and use it. That will tell me where to find some oil. Jane! My lantern is empty. Kenneth didn't pack any spare oil. No, okay, you're not going to tell me. All right. <laughs> Do you know where I can find a place called Hobbs Barrow? Never heard of it. Thanks for your time. We'll be done by tomorrow morning. Come back then if you want to explore the woods. Ah, oh, maybe we can do something with this fossil. Splendid. I've managed to extract it in one piece. Get some fossil fuel. No, that... <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Maybe the blacksmith wants it. What do you make of this ammonite? Now then, tis a beauty that it looks familiar. Okay. What do you make of now? Th oh, uh, good day. Yes. I was wondering if you might be able to spare some lantern oil. I don't have much to spare, lass. Paraffin is as rare as hen's teeth in these parts. How much coin do you have? None, I'm afraid. If you're in a bind, I can trade you a small amount. A trade, you say? Aye. What can I trade you for some lantern oil? Surprise me. Um, your time. Let's, let's try that fossil. I got... That. Would you trade some of your paraffin for this fossilized ammonite, Mr. Crozier? Now then, it is a beauty that. It looks familiar. I'll take it off your hands. Wonderful. Let me fetch some paraffin from inside. There you are. Thank you, Mr. Crozier. Right, okay, so now, yeah, is that working? Yeah, there we go. My lantern is fueled and ready for action. Right, now we can get, we can find Jane. Right, let's put this lantern to good use. at once <laughs> oh it's a badger goodness me what the hell Jane. silly what are you doing in that smelly old badger's hole. You were in there. No, I weren't. Yes, you were. Not true. I was hiding behind that tree over there. I got bored of waiting for you. So where can I find Hobbs Barrow? Go north from the church graveyard, up the hill. You'll see some muddy fields on the horizon. That's Mr. Bryden's farm. Hobbs Barrow is there. Don't tell any grown-ups I told you. And thanks for getting Myrtle back. 
My pleasure. Thank you, Jane. You've been a great help. Okay, that was interesting. So she wasn't in the hole, yet her giggles were coming from it. Interesting. Right, so up here. Up here. As I trudged through the barren moors, with only the odd sheep for company, I reflected upon my visit to Bewley thus far. The enigmatic Mr. Shoulder and his puzzling disappearance. The townsfolk of Bewley, who had made it as difficult as they could for me to find Hobbs Barrow. The suspicion, the wariness in their eyes. Only now I know it was actually fear. In the end, it was the innocence of a child, young Jane, that condemned me to my fate. Okay. I've no desire to wander the furrows. Hmm. What do you want? My name is Thomasina Bateman. Mr. Bryden, I presume. Aye. What do you want, lass? I understand Hobbs Barrow is located on your land. Oh. Well, yes. Why do you ask? I am an antiquarian, Mr. Bryden. I'm writing a volume on the Barrows of England. Oh. I suppose you'll be wanting to dig about it. If at all possible, Mr. Bryden. I was invited to Bewley by Mr. Leonard Shoulder, who told me such an excavation would be possible. Leonard Shoulder? <laughs> I haven't seen him in years. The last I heard he were on death's door. There's to be no more digging there, lass. Not since it went so badly last time. Tell me about yourself, Mr. Bryden. I live here with my wife, and I might be long in tooth, but I can still run this farm without too much help. Was there a previous excavation of Hobbs Barrow? Aye. My brother dug it up. Must have been, what, 25 years ago. You see, Whatever he found inside, well, it drove him mad. Oh? Aye. I moved back here to look after him. Poor bastard hanged himself not long after. I... I'm sorry, Mr. Bryden. That's terrible. Aye. Time passes, but they were an awful thing. What did your brother find? Samuel. Samuel were his name. Sorry. What did Samuel find in the barrow? I don't know. But something went wrong. Afterward... He could barely speak. You couldn't make out a word like. That must have been hard. You lost a hand in that excavation too, you know. Goodness me, how? I try hard not to speculate on what might have happened, lass. I'd see him disappear into that barrow, dragging timber in with him. You'd hear him hammering away for hours. I offered him help, but he'd have none of it. Soon enough, he blocked the entrance off. To look at it now, you'd never know the thing we dug up. The landers reclaimed it. Who else was involved in the excavation? Two others, I believe. Outsiders, perhaps. I can't say for sure. I think they left town pretty swiftly afterwards. I lived in Bakewell at the time. I only moved back here to look after Samuel. I took over the farm when he passed away. I see. What can you tell me about your farm? Samuel's fair to side. We're a fortunate family. The soil is fertile here. Crops grow without too much trouble. All the other farmers around here raised livestock, even Lord Panswick. We grow up feed for them. Most fortunate, Mr. Bryden. Is your wife home? She's out in fields, lass, pulling weeds. The curse of such fertile soil. <laughs> Forty years we've been married. I couldn't do it without her, you see. How splendid. Aye, my wife is a fine woman. Are you married, lass? No, no. I've had my fair share of proposals, Mr. Bryden, but that's not the life for me. Marriage is an important institution. You'll find a man one day. Hmm. I manage rather well without one, Mr. Bryden. You haven't seen Mr. Shoulder for some time? I hear about him now and then, but it must be a good few years since I set eyes on him. He hasn't been here to visit Hobbs Barrow? Not to my knowledge. I heard he's beset by ailments. Don't leave his home often. Hmm. How odd. I assumed he'd spoken to you about my visit. Not at all. 
can you tell me of Lord Panswick? He keeps us going. Most of our crops go to feed his animals. What is he like? Oh, I've hardly laid eyes on him. He sends his workers here to pick up the crops. I see. You say Mr. Shoulder is at death's door. What exactly ails him? I'm unsure. It's just what I've heard. I wouldn't want to speculate on matters that are not my business. Mr. Bryden, may I please have your permission to excavate Hobbs Barrow? No. Have you not been listening, lass? <laughs> Samuel found something in there that's best left to rot. No digging here, lass. As you wish. I'm afraid I won't take no for an answer. Wouldn't you like to find out more about what Wouldn't Samuel... would you like to find out more about what Samuel found in there? Perhaps. But Samuel boarded up that barra for a reason. You don't want to tempt the same fate, lass. Perhaps I can at least see Hobbs Barrow. Hmm. I suppose you've come a long way to be here, lass. All the way from London, Mr. Bryden. Hmm. Have you any proof of all you've told me? You wish to see proof of what, Mr. Bryden? I can't let any Tom, Dick or Harry wander around me fields. What proof have you of your claims? Thanks for your time. Tarana. Here is proof that Mr. Shoulder invited me to Bewley in order to excavate Hobbs Barrow. Leonard making bold promises, I see. <laughs> Don't make me regret this. But yes, you can have a look at it. Thank you. Any road. Once you've set your eyes on it, you won't be wanting outdo with it. The place gives one a queer feeling. So where can I find it? Through that gate to your left. Just head straight across the top to the field there. After ten minutes or so, you'll see Barra. Set on a hill ahead. Thank you again, Mr. Bryden. I really do appreciate it. I have nothing else. Before we go there, let's have a quick look around this side. A bucket. We can... It's not mine to take. No. The empty bucket smells of rancid milk. Yeah. Oh, a goat. Hello. Easy girl. I'm not fond of goats at the best of times, but this one seems particularly disagreeable. <laughs> Probably the one that's been giving him all the, uh... I should leave the goat alone. <laughs> Giving him all the milk, perhaps. Right, well, let's uh, go through this gate and finally see Hobbs Barrow. I probably should have brought my umbrella. Probably. A-R. A-R. I haven't a clue what that could be referring to. Hmm. Finally, here it is. Hobbs Barrow. Indeed, a barrow of a most unusual rectangular form. I've not seen something like this since West Kennet Longbarrow. Yes, this shall make a fine entry for my book. What secrets do you conceal, I wonder? That smell, earthy and sweet. Another flashback? Yep. Three, two, one. You can open your eyes now, Thomasina. Come. Are you ready for your first excavation? Yes, Daddy. Capital. Make sure you remember everything I've taught you. I have a feeling you might find something special. How exciting! I'll be watching from the steps, my little bird. Good luck! Thank you, Daddy. Now I'm ready. <laughs> OK. 
Okay, uh, trowel with that. No treasures here. Hmm, okay. More dirt there. Oh. Nothing here. Okay. Hello. <laughs> Can I use the trowel with the statue? If I break the statue. Okay. Oh. Treasure. Ta -da. Daddy, I found the treasure. Look. Well done, little bird. Your first successful excavation. That urn you're holding is very old and precious. Take good care of it, all right? I will, Daddy. I promise. I do have a feeling there is something exceptional to be discovered here. I must gain Mr. Bryden's permission to excavate. Or do I just chisel it up? I can't see how that will happen. Right, fair enough. Um, trowel it up. In good time. <laughs> uh, Alright, okay. What's, the, what's our to-do list? Return to the inn. It's time to head back for the evening. Alright, okay. Oh, not that. I won't let me use the map, so I guess something's going to happen on our way back. Oh, it's dark. Darkness falls quickly here. I should make my way back to the inn. See if the map is available. Oh, it is now. Okay. I shouldn't disturb him at this late hour. Okay. Let's go back to the village square. Mr. Crozier is enjoying a large mug of ale. Good evening, Mr. Crozier. Evening. Thanks again for the fossil, lass. Tis truly a beauty. You're most welcome. How long have you been collecting fossils? Ever since I were a boy. The moors look a barren place, but there are plenty of fossils to be found in the rock formations. All manner of creatures to uncover. Such a playground for a young lad. What's your favorite piece in your collection? The ammonite you gave me today. The most recent is always the best. Indeed. What about you, lass? Do you collect out? I do. You see, I'm writing a book on the barrows of England. It shall be called Vestiges of the Antiquities in Rural England. I document all my findings. But what do you collect? Pottery, tools and such. Bones too, no doubt. No, I leave those in place. You've got a morbid heart, lass. Fussing about in old graves like that. We're not dissimilar in that we both take an interest in the remains of the long gone. I suppose you have a point there. How's your book coming along, then? Very well, thank you. Though I'm rather keen to begin my chapter on Hobbs Barrow. Thanks for your time. Aye. Speak to you later. Good evening, Miss Bateman. Good evening, Stanley. I found Hobbs Barrow. Oh, remember what I said, Miss Bateman? There are stories connected to that place. <laughs> yes, stories you won't elaborate on, I might add. Don't worry about me, Stanley. I'm quite capable of warding off imagined fiends. I have no doubt, but please leave that place be. I've come this far, there's no turning back now. That's precisely what worries me. Goodbye. See you soon. 
Right, let's speak to the new blokes here. Good evening, gentlemen. What are you going to do about him? If he thinks he can take her away from here, he's got another thing coming. I am going to knock his bloody block off. <laughs> In fact, I can think of a better punishment. Oi, what do you want, lady? Piss off. <laughs> you heard the man. Charming. What about this guy playing with a fucking knife? Good evening, sir. Uh, I'll leave you to it. <laughs> okay. Hello again, Cyril. You're still here. Did Mr. Long convince you of the virtues of Bewley Station? What the hell do you think? <laughs> Book her off and leave me to me drink. He seems even more wound up than usual. Alright, well, let's go to bed then, I guess. Go to bed, I'm tired. Time for bed. Tomorrow I shall convince Mr. Bryden to allow me to begin my excavation. I didn't even see the kitty cat in front of the fire. Miss Bateman. How are you? Tired. Gonna buy you a drink? Uh, one won't hurt. No thanks, Mr. Pillet. Shouldn't you stop drinking so much? Shouldn't you stop drinking so much? You're beginning to sound like my dear wife. <laughs> Please, Miss Bateman. I feel bad about what happened last night. I'm sorry I can't remember it. That's all right, Mr. Tillett. Alcohol can do all sorts of damage to one's memory. I was thinking that maybe if we had another drink tonight, I might remember what happened. I'm not sure that's logical. But worth trying? <sighs> oh, Mr. Tillett, if you insist. Very good. Take your seat, Miss Bateman. I shall return with the goods. <laughs> To Leonard's shoulder. Wherever he may be. I've been meaning to ask you something. Yes? Why did Leonard's shoulder ask you to dig up Hobbs Barrow? Despite his disappearing act the previous evening, not to mention his questionable sobriety, I decided Mr. Tillett was to be my ally. I spoke again of Mr. Shoulder's letter. His proposed excavation and my status as an antiquarian and barrow digger. He was fascinated and quite excited at the prospect of meeting the soon-to-be author of a real-life book. You must find all manner of riches on your digs. Barrow digging is not all success, Mr. Tillett. Often I'll come across the likeliest of sights steeped in promise. We set to work with shovel and pick and all the other barrow opening paraphernalia you can imagine. Every stone carefully taken down, every shovel full of earth put dutifully through the sieve, and we find nothing. Or you may find a miserable remnant of animal bone or a shard of pottery hardly to be recognized from the peat in which it decayed. Sometimes it's as if some Neolithic humorist prepared an elaborate practical joke for your special benefit. It still sounds much more exciting than spending your days sitting in England's most remote railway station. <sighs> Are you all right, Mr. Tillett? I've had another argument with Agnes. Your wife? Aye. She didn't want me coming to the plough tonight. Truth is, I've been drinking my life away since my mother passed. Oh, that's terrible. I'm sorry for your loss. You're kind, Miss Bateman. Thank you. It's been a year since the old girl left us. She had a horrible end. Wasting away, day by day. Consumption got her. She would know but bones by the end. I can't get the image out of my mind. She were everything to me. I'm so sorry. I apologize for going on, Miss Bateman. It's not appropriate. Don't worry, Mr. Tillett. I appreciate your openness. Used to love going for walks out in the moor, my mother and I. Ever since I were a little one, she'd get a tear in her eye as she looked out upon it. She loved this land. I asked Mr. Crozier to build a bench, which we've erected at a favourite lookout spot on the moors. Margaret's Lookout, we called it. Aye. That's a beautiful tribute. Aye. 
If you take a seat there, do keep her in your thoughts, won't you? Of course, Mr. Tillett. We already I did. Relate in some manner. My father had an accident when I was very young. He's still alive, but he can neither move nor speak. He spends his entire life bedbound and incapable of communicating or looking after himself in any way. How dreadful. He was a barrow digger himself, an antiquarian of some renown. He taught me so much, even though I was so young. I think writing this book is my way of carrying on his work. It helps me reclaim those earlier memories of him. And I visit him often to tell him all about my excavations. Can he hear you? I've no idea. The doctors aren't sure. I'd do anything to make him better, Mr. Tillett. I'd do anything to bring him back to the man he was. I am in a state of suspended mourning for a man caught between life and death. Dreadful. Just dreadful. We all have our weaknesses. Mine just happens to be my father. And what of your mother? A cold woman. We haven't talked in quite some time. I think she blamed me for my father's accident somehow. You were but a child. Indeed. She thus saw it fit that a governess should raise me as she spent her life grieving for my father. Well then, I propose a toast. A toast to what? A shared sense of loss. I'll toast to that, Arthur. Now then, enough of this wallowing. Let us be merry. Another round. I really shouldn't. But I did. And another after that. And another. The frustrations of my visit to Bewley slipped away with each swill of Stanley's finest ale. We had great fun that night, Mr. Tillett and I. I treasure the memory. Go on, then. Let's hear those pipes. I uh, mustn't. Sing the song. You're incorrigible. Please. You'll make a sad man happy. Oh, all right, then. Clasps, Celts, and arrowheads I'll try to claw within my clutch. And if a shield I should espy, I'll vow there ne'er was such. With popish tricks and relics rare, the priests their flocks do gull. In casting out the earth, take care. Huzzah! I've found a skull! <laughs> oh, is the cat gonna come in again? Oh. What's happening here? Oh, what the fuck is that? A gremlin? Hello, Thomasina. What is this? H who are you? I'm the one that saved your father. What do you mean? You were here 25 years ago. My father? You were deep down with the others. You were there and something went wrong. I dragged him out. Impossible. I helped him then and I can help him again. I, I don't understand. Believe my words. You'll find proof in morning. Now go. One more thing. This is not a dream. The second day, ex pascor, ex pascor. Goodness, that was a terrible sleep. Okay, I think that's where we're going to call it. So, oh, what's that? 
book. All right, we'll, we'll leave that to the next part. So her, her father was one of the two outsiders that went with, uh, I can't remember his name, but Mr. Bernard, Bernard's uh, brother. But anyway, so we don't know who the third person is yet, slash second outsider, but that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking her father was... Well, I mean, that, that's kind of what that gremlin thing told us. But anyway, uh, yeah, so next part we'll pick up this book and no doubt it will tell us something that we are not aware of at the moment. Uh, yeah, hope you've enjoyed. Have a good day, everyone. Hopefully speak to you soon. Bye.